what was started and what is now is polar opposite different than what we ever anticipated. People choose to come to a place to eat and we just so happen to have the opportunity to get to connect with them in a, in a deep and meaningful way sometimes. That's amazing. Like that doesn't happen all the time. Beyond that, it is really hard work. I mean, it's, it's work too, it's a daily operation. You have to believe in what you're physically creating. And for us, that's, you know, that's food. Staple House was built off an idea that started out of the home that I built with my husband. You welcome strangers into your home and you hope that they leave happy. Ryan was the chef. And being the very in love supporting wife, I was like, heck yeah, let's do it out of the house. It was just after that first initial year when we really started to say, okay, we need to, we need to take a next step if this is gonna be real, what we were going on for four years. Uh, we had no idea it would take that long until one day kind of just an unexpected crisis happened. Ryan was diagnosed with a late stage cancer and was given six months to live. Um, that was de December of, of 2012. He was given six months. I mean, we had no idea what that meant. Um, I mean, I still go through life thinking I'll, just, I'll go home and I, I get to see him. But what happened after that was you know, nothing short of kind of miraculous and, and uplifting. Ryan's um, bosses, mentors, dear friends uh, ended up kind of coming together uh, to aid in our benefit and help form the very first uh, fundraiser, an event called Team Heidi. Heidi is short for our last name of Heidinger and it raised $275,000. After that initial Team Heidi was put on and that amount of money was raised for one guy and you know one couple, that, that's what catapulted the idea of this industry doesn't have kind of a backbone of support when you get out of work. Why couldn't we develop it? Heidi called me and was like, hey, did you have time to grab a cup of coffee? I want to just run something by you. And he wasn't necessarily trying to get me to be a part of it. He just wanted to see if I thought it was something he should pursue, and he just wanted to bounce some ideas back and forth. And I thought it was an opportunity to help seek out his dream and, and have it come to fruition. And so I didn't think twice about it. So Smith came to me and said, so talk to your brother, and we're going to open Staple House. And it was kind of a really great um, you know, difference between both Smith and Heidi with what, how they believed in their philosophy on food, but how different it was. If I were looking at the food at Staple House and at Smith's and his team's creation, I would see some of Heidi um, in the beautiful straightforward of honoring the integrity of the ingredients. And we all think about that, I think, probably in our own way of like how cool would it have been to kind of see them actually do it together. And I know Smith gets a ton of motivation and influence based off that, but this menu is his. I mean, this being on the map food-wise is Ryan Smith. I mean, he's, in, he's insanely talented. A big goal for me is to try to make something that you can't replicate at home. So that's kind of an important thing because when I go out to eat, I want to, I think it should challenge people a little bit, you know, and um, the food is, you know, supposed to be fun and hopefully people enjoy the way it tastes. Because <laughs> yeah. if, if we don't hit that, then we just, we gotta start over. <laughs> Heidi was a huge fan of National Lampoon's Vacation, and um, we have a garage door, and on the face of it, I don't know if you caught this, but um, there is a mural of John Candy saying, sorry folks, park's closed, moves out front, should've told you. It's, it's keeping it lighthearted. I mean, we offer a five course tasting menu, and some really elevated, very creative food, but it's in a completely casual, unpretentious type of space. And so why not bring some humor from Clark Griswold in when you can? He and I had a, a kind of our last one-on-one -on -one talk. He basically kind of handed the restaurant over to me as far as like, you know, my position here. And uh, that was extremely difficult. You know, this was his, his baby everything you've been working on for years, so it's hard, you know? Ryan is so cool. He is still so cool. He uh, 
super jovial at heart and incredibly kind and so talented. And, and before he passed away, he told all of us that he would make himself known. This is, uh, this pays homage to Ryan. Um, uh, do you know the story of a thousand paper cranes? Um, there's a Japanese young girl who was sick and I believe had cancer. It took a community of people um, folding uh, paper cranes. The idea behind it is if you receive a thousand paper cranes, you get a wish. We received a thousand paper cranes twice. And it was two mornings after all the family was still together at our home and um, a crane, uh, which there's no water in near Atlanta where we live, uh, flew and landed on our chimney and stayed there for two hours. It was awesome. <laughs> he was just a humble person who happened to say really amazing things that people live by. I mean, anything long lasting or worthwhile takes time and complete surrender is brilliant and beautiful and something we should all live by. None of us really knew or expected Ryan to pass away. Ryan knew, um, but it wasn't something that we ever thought really could happen. Um, and I remember there was one meeting that the four of us had and, you know, Ryan kind of, it was, it was his turn to kind of go and talk and kind of share. And he said, you know, I just want you to be prepared that this could be the three of you. And I remember us just sitting there in silence. I don't know why. It was like the elephant in the room, you know, that nobody wanted to talk about, but he wasn't scared of talking about that stuff. And I wanted to keep it the elephant as long as I could because I wasn't ready to, to face that idea of him not being here. My brother had a um, quiet way about him. He, he had come to a place and a peace and an understanding that he might not see it through, but um, I think he was honored and humbled by the love and the support and the dedication to, to honor pursuing the dream of Staple House. Kind of like that weight of what that actually means, if that could ever happen, and the fact that it has, and we're here, and we're doing it, um, and we've created it for ourselves too, you know? It, this, is, this has become ours without him physically being present, and that's really crazy and, and powerful um, and special.